FAU potentially with a season-saving victory, just in terms of credibility, honestly, uh, today. They needed it desperately after losing to Bryant. If they were going to stay in the top 25, they had to get this one done. And they did get it done as pretty decent-sized underdogs, 96-89. Uh, it kind of felt like 2023 March to me, man. It kind of felt so late tournament again because it was John L. Davis and it was Elijah Martin early and often. What does this win mean, Jeff, for FAU? Well, I mean, they've got other opportunities, right? I mean, they, they still get Illinois and Jimmy V on December 5th. They still get uh, Arizona in Vegas. We're going to be down there for the Field of 68 tip-off. Next Thursday, they play Liberty, and Saturday, they play Charleston. So the good thing for Dusty May is it's not like the sky is falling here just because of that one bad loss, and it was a bad loss that they just looked past Bryant. Now, here my biggest thing from today is Elijah Martin finally looked healthy because he had missed a a chunk of the preseason with a stress reaction, hadn't played well at all. In fact, he was shooting 24% from the field and 23% from three coming into the game. Terrible. I mean, couldn't make a shot. And uh, today, as you said, he and John L combined for 51 points. They both shot it really well from deep. They got to the basket. Elijah was making pull-up, foul line jumpers. He just looked like Elijah Martin. (laughs) So, like, that to me was the biggest thing for them coming into a stretch here where they're going to need him to be himself. And beating a a Texas A&M team that – a lot of people thought was like top 10-ish, myself included. Now, again, they were shorthanded. Henry Coleman went out with an injury. He played about 15 minutes. He went out late in the first half and didn't come back. But, man, how good is Wade Taylor? Like, those guards today were the highest level. Wade Taylor, the fourth, was probably the best player. He was the best player on the court today. And he might be – and, Jarrell, I'd love to know your take on this because you've watched Tyler Kolick a lot, and I said – I think the Marquette uh, point guard is the best at his position in the country. Wade Taylor's not far off, is he? No, not at all, man. And he was, uh, boy, like you said, Jeff, just absolutely spectacular today. Every single, every single time with uh, FAU and they, and you got to get those guys credit. Like you said, FAU looked at like they looked like the Final Four team that we saw last year with those two guards that can give you a bucket or make a play for their teammates at any given time from anywhere on the court uh, and Jonell Davis and Elijah Martin. And like you said, Elijah Martin just getting back to being himself. He looked a lot more comfortable and, you know, I'm sure he was just waiting or chomping at the bit to kind of get the lid off the rim for himself. But uh, man, I got to give a a major credit to Texas A&M because every time I thought they were just going to pack it in and fold up and they go on another run, man, here comes uh, Wade Taylor and he's just, he's doing it every which way three-point lines, playing in the pick and roll, pushing the ball out to makes and misses, getting to the rim, getting in ones. Uh, man, he single-handedly made this a competitive game, and uh, he gave them all that he could handle. But as far as that matchup with him and Kolick, um, I think they're a, a, a little different, both really good point guards. But I tell people this all the time, and, uh, and sometimes it's hard to tell just because of the flow of the game. But TK is such a pass-first point guard. And that's his gift. That's his gift to the game. Like, he scores because people are terrified of him coming out and getting 12 to 15 assists and then all the other guys getting 15 to 20 points. That's why TK is open. That's why you see him get those flip shots at the rim with a late contest. It's because they're so scared of him and they know his passing ability. And I seen it right away that first year he uh, transferred over from George Mason. Just his ability to play out of pick and roll and make rotational passes out of the pick and roll. It's such an underrated skill at the college level because if you could do that, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna eat at the college in the college game. If you can make those passes consistently, you're gonna get six assists a game at least, and then guys are going to love playing with you, so the coach is always going to have a ball in your hand. So I think they're a little bit different. But listen, pound for pound, Wade Taylor, uh, he's not really taking the backseat to too many people. I do like Kolick a little bit better because I think he's a little bit more of a natural PG, uh, which really doesn't exist anymore on any levels. But uh, but TK can score too. So, it, you know, it kind of it balanced it out. But, man, Wade Taylor was impressive today.